half of my career, I've specialized in trauma nursing. When people hear that I'm a nurse, the first question they ask is, what kind of nurse are you? And when I tell them I'm a trauma nurse, that usually breeds a lot of exciting questions. What's the worst thing you've seen? I've also specialized in my career as a hospice nurse. When people hear I'm a hospice nurse, one of the things they usually say is, oh my gosh, how do you do that? Isn't it depressing? It takes a special person to do that. I couldn't do that kind of work. Actually, I look at hospice nursing as a gift, a calling, a blessing. It's a very humbling experience. I get to walk with patients through their last journey here on Earth and soak in all the wisdom and the knowledge they've shared with me along the way. I've grown to learn that I look at my patients not just as patients, but I look at them as teachers. They teach me. They talk to me about their regrets, their sadnesses, their victories, their celebrations, and I get to walk that last journey again with them. I take all of the lessons they teach me, they teach me so much, and some of regrets that they have, and I soak all of it in like a sponge, and I want to share some of those stories with you. As you can see from the picture behind me, this is me back in the 90s when I first became a registered nurse. Uh, I've been a registered nurse for 20 years. I couldn't legally drink a beer, but I could administer medication back then. So you do the math on my age. <laughs> my first story is about a woman who actually suffered a loss. Her daughter was killed in a motor vehicle accident. Her and her daughter fought that evening. Her daughter left. There was no I love yous, no I'm sorry's. Her daughter walked out the door and she never saw her again. Now this woman is dying. She said she's wasted so much time living in that memory, living in that pain. She didn't learn anything from that experience. She lost so many interpersonal relationships because of it, and she wished that she could have just moved on. Another story was on September 11th. I was driving over to a woman's house the day the Trade Towers collapsed. I was a little bit cranky, my tooth hurt. I was up all night with my son. I was very tired. As I entered her house and we sat and we watched the second trade tower collapse, she turned to me and said, Danielle, this is what it's all about. In a crisis, in one day, one month, one year, ask yourself, will this really matter? And if the answer is no, then laugh about it and move on. Another gentleman I took care of, his wife suffered from MS. He was healthy at the time. He spent so much time worrying about the what ifs, what if this happens, what if that happens, how, are we, how is this going to play out? Now he's dying, his wife isn't healthy. He said, I wish, Danielle, I could have just stayed in the moment. There's so many things, and you know what? 90% of what I, talked, what I worried about never came to light. I wasted so much time that I could have spent with my wife when we were both healthier. Another gentleman I took care of was in an argument with his sister. They used to be very, very close. They were estranged for several years after that argument. Both were stubborn, both were full of pride. Neither one would try to connect. The last 48 hours of his life, I was blessed enough to sit at his bedside. As he was dying, his sister walked in, and the first thing he said was, my goodness, we used to be so close, what happened? It was at that moment I learned the power of forgiveness and how important it is to let go of the hate. Another woman who was a CEO of a major company focused on money, focused on greed, focused on getting to the top. She had two children, both of which she was estranged from. She didn't focus on any real life relationships as she journeyed her way to the top. Now she was dying, her children wanted nothing to do with her, her friendships were very superficial, and she said, Danielle, I wish I would have learned to help other people and get out of myself, get out of ego, and be of service to other people. My life would have been so much fuller. Now, you don't have to be a hospice nurse just to experience these amazing people and share their journeys. You can also volunteer and do the same thing. Patients could use companions, families could use some breaks. It's a wonderful experience and a wonderful journey to share. I've shared a few websites behind me about different ways you can get involved. There are several hospices in the valley. Google them, look them up, make some phone calls. It's an amazing experience. There's only... Thank you. There's only two things guaranteed in life, and that's birth and death. The rest is your journey in between. Your journey, your stories, your choices. We're all in this thing called life together. And my patients have taught me several things. They taught me to not dwell in the past. They've taught me to not dwell on the future. They taught me to live in the moment and to love and be kind to one another, no matter who they are or what their status.
That's how I want to walk my journey. How do you want to walk yours? Thank you.